Okay, to show you what the inside of a Precision Pro 905 nanometer laser rangefinder looks like, I want to make a second video here, tag it on to my first. I've already peeled away the uh, rubber panel holes from this and taken the screws out and cracked the case. So this is what it looks like when you first open it. You can see how everything is crammed in there. <clears throat> now I've already taken apart one of these units and, and removed the insides to show you here. Um, here's that main board that's screwed on here with uh, three screws to the case and uh, the positive and negative battery leads. This is a uh, ribbon cable for the LCD. You can see it here that you can see through the viewfinder. It's just a, a black crosshair and it gives you some numbers for the distance when an object is detected. This top portion, that actually, uh, the viewfinder here actually has the uh, laser diode output coming out of it also. <clears throat> the way that's done is the laser diode in this circuit board here, the driver or the launch board, is shooting into a, uh, a prism here. And from there, it, it comes out. Now, the bottom half is just a detector lens and the detector board's there. It's got a photo diode inside. I've already cut away the, the switches that, that were on here so that I could use this. I was playing around with it earlier tonight, looking at the, uh, the infrared using a uh, camera that does that was made for that it does not have an infrared filter and this is made by Firefield and they're, they're fairly cheap about a hundred dollars I think this one actually cost me a little bit more there's the uh, the lens and then the viewfinder here anyway it's that is sensitive to infrared it picks up the 905 nanometer really well and uh, then I can view it because if I use my iPhone like I'm using right now to record this you cannot see infrared with it the filter just prevents it from coming through even with the high pulse power output of these units which is about 75 watts <clears throat> the average power though is quite low it's under one milliwatt this is a class one laser which means it has to be under 0.7 or seven tenths of one milliwatt, which is minuscule. Um, but it does the job, obviously. Here's a unit though, about being torn apart. If you do get one of these, there's four screws. Two are under here. You gotta get a screwdriver under that, a flat edge. To get it ripped up a little then you can pull it off the rest of the way same thing on the bottom get a screwdriver under that get a little bit of it torn up and then you can pull it off and get to the other two screws after that um, you can crack it open if you have a, a wide wedge screwdriver kind of jam it in here and, and it, it will crack open but there's tape here that needs to be cut and tape here These are being currently sold on eBay. I think $15 is what he wants for them. I got them a lot cheaper by buying a large lot of them. The laser diode itself, inside here, if you buy that new on eBay, and that's like close to $15. There were more in the past. Some of these guys listing them in China are trying to prowse, excuse me, <coughs> price gouge cuts. 
I've seen them as high as like fifty dollars. Uh, they weren't selling, so they went down to about fifteen. Here's another board off out of another unit. You can see uh, without. Uh, the, what the launch board or the laser dad driver looks like without the uh, the brass box soldered to the top of it. But it, it goes right there. This is a kind of, um, well, it's a concave on, on the inside of that lens and obviously convex on the outside. Um, it works real well to keep the beam tighter if I didn't have that lens on there, just pointing it at the wall, maybe less than two feet away, the beam pattern is a huge stripe. It's like close to a foot wide. But with this, uh, it, it, it's like a quarter of that. So it, it's a lot smaller. And if I get a focal length lens that's about four inches in front of it, it, it column makes it really well without overshooting the edges of the lens if you keep this piece on. So I only tore it down to that part. I could use this um, and mount it up just like that just by cutting it in half like I was showing in my earlier video. Um, but I decided that was even too big for what I want to do. I just want to use this as a 905 nanometer near infrared eye source or near IR source uh, and I want to put it in a pointer. This board is a problem for me. I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of this board. It had a lot of functions. It would drive the LCD. It has a processor on there. Um, it would also produce pulses for the laser diode obviously that I was measuring the high voltage coming out of this chip capacitor here surface mount and the detector is fed into this portion so the processor crunches the numbers and gives you a distance so I think this can be done a lot smaller I just have to figure out how this works and I'm hoping if anyone can look at these videos and tell me what's going on and what the function is of the 200 volts I'm measuring peak to peak here going to this driver board, which has a diode that only requires 11 volts. I sure like to know what's going on with that. I think these are two MOSFETs and that's where I'm, I'm measuring that high voltage. Now I can put my finger right on here and I can feel a, a little bit of tingling. The reason it doesn't burn me or shock me is because they're extremely short pulses, even though they're 200 volts or a little more peak to peak. They're very short pulses. There's not a lot of current capability getting through my skin with those pulses, but the diode itself is actually able to pull up to 40 amps with 11 volts. So my guess is there's a voltage divider in here somehow, and they're just using the high voltage to drive the amount of current they need and picking off the 11 volts they need off the divider. Otherwise, I don't know how that works. If someone does, please let me know. So there you go, that's the inside of the Pre Precision Pro V400. This is a much older model than the new ones. The newer ones have had the problems uh, fixed with the LCD, so there's no problem there now. But some of the older ones were turned in out of many, many, many thousands. I got the rejects, so that's how I ended up with them.